The Homestead Act of 1862 offered the opportunity to own land not only to American-born white male farmers, but also to single women and immigrants who declared their intention to become citizens. After the Civil Rights Act of 1866, African Americans could homestead as well. An estimated 3,400 black homesteaders claimed land in the Great Plains. Some black homesteaders, like pioneering filmmaker Oscar Michaud and agronomist George Washington Carver, independently claimed homesteads in predominantly white communities. Elsewhere, groups of black homesteaders claimed neighboring lands and built six intentional communities on the Great Plains, including Nicodemus, Kansas, now a National Historic Site administered by the National Park Service. While most homesteaders made a single claim, Charles Spies legally and skillfully navigated evolving homestead laws in his search for his forever homestead across the Great Plains. He tried his luck in the intentional black homesteading communities in Nebraska, Wyoming, and South Dakota. By following Charles Spies's homesteading history, we can understand homesteaders' arduous quest for a productive farm and a supportive community. Black homesteaders like Charles Spies exhibited tenacity, adaptability, and audacity to build communities in the Great Plains while facing additional hurdles along the way. Charles Spies' parents, Moses and Susan Kirk Spies, were born and enslaved in Yadkin County, North Carolina, in the 1840s. By 1874, Moses escaped the cycle of debt that typified the Southern sharecropper's life, working in Indiana before leading his family to Nebraska. His son Charles was born in Westerville in Custer County, Nebraska in 1882. There in Custer County, Charles met and married the daughter of homesteaders, Rosetta Meehan, in 1907. Her mother, Hester Freeman Meehan, was born free in Canada. Her father, Charles Meehan, was the son of Jewish and German immigrants raised by a black stepfather in the black community of Elgin Settlement, Ontario. Like many homesteaders in the Great Plains, the Spices built sod homes, as evidenced by homesteader Solomon Butcher's evocative photographs. They later upgraded their sod house for a wood frame one. Charles' older siblings formed the Spice Jubilee Singers, providing them income and paid for college. For a time, it looked like the Spices had achieved the American dream in Custer County, Nebraska. Then, in 1904, Josiah Webb, Charles' half-uncle, died childless without a will leaving his property in legal jeopardy. His extended family fought for Josiah's land all the way to the Nebraska Supreme Court. The Nebraska Supreme Court declared all marriages between enslaved people as not legally binding, causing the loss of Josiah Webb's homestead. Feeling spurned by the courts denying their family ties dating back to enslavement, the Spies family decided to leave Westerville. The Spies and Taylor families took advantage of the Enlarged Homestead Act of 1909 to claim lands in Goshen County in southeastern Wyoming near the Nebraska border. There, Charles and his brothers and sisters John, Joseph, Lizzie, Mary, and Miles Spies claimed additional homestead land to help build the community of Empire, Wyoming. Charles built a five-room wood frame house but struggled with drought and frequent crop failure. These agricultural difficulties would convince him to later take up ranching on the Great Plains. Sadly, the death of Charles' relative by marriage, Basement Taylor, while in police custody in 1913, helped bring the dream of empire to a tragic end a few years later. Charles Spies remained undeterred to build community through homesteading. He and Rosetta Meehan Spies joined her family in DeWitty, Nebraska. Black homesteaders formed a witty under the Kincaid Act, which offered homesteaders 640 acres of land. There, Charles proved up an additional 80 acres in 1925. DeWitty, named after its postmaster, Miles DeWitty, changed its name aptly to Audacious in 1915. DeWitty's black homesteaders built a school, a church, and fostered friendly relationships with the neighboring white community of Brown Lee until the D Great Depression and droughts forced most black homesteaders to leave DeWitty by the 1930s. While many folks from Empire and DeWitty put their homesteading dreams in the past and moved to cities like Omaha, Lincoln, and the Twin Cities, Charles Spies resolved to continue ranching. He had astutely realized that topography and soils would not support agriculture in DeWitty, so like others in the community, Charles became a rancher, 
a profession he'd continued in his next community. In 1925, Charles and his wife Rosetta and their 13 children joined the burgeoning black homesteader community in Sully County, South Dakota. Black homesteaders in Sully County promoted the Northwest Homestead Movement with the goal of attracting black homesteaders and building an agricultural college. The species first stayed with established black homesteaders like Norville Blair before purchasing land since they'd maxed out their homestead claims. In 1942, Charles Spies was 60 years old, still living and ranching in Sully County, outlasting many of his neighboring farmers and ranchers. A few years later, Charles moved from Sully County to Casper, Wyoming, where his son Howard lived. Charles died and was buried there in 1970. Want to know more fascinating stories of black homesteaders in the Great Plains? Visit this website.